So it's about time on this channel that I talk about how to solve cubic equations. So I'm going to look at this prototype, x cubed minus 15x squared plus 81x minus 175 equals 0, and show the process of how to actually find a real root. So first of all, one method that's kind of a clever idea is to eliminate the x squared term. And here we're going to do that by shifting the variable x to be x plus 5. If we do that, let's analyze what happens to the first few terms. We'll have an x plus 5 cubed, and then a minus 15 times x plus 5 squared, and then some other terms. If we look at the first term here, x plus 5 all cubed, the coefficient of x squared there will be 3 times the constant coefficient 5, which, is, uh, which gives us a 15 in total. Whereas in the next term, we have a minus 15x squared. So these two cancel each other out, right? So in general, we'd be shifting by the negative of the squared coefficient divided by 3. Now, if we actually plug x plus 5 in and expand everything out here, we'll end up with the cubic equation x cubed plus 6x minus 20. So I want to look at a systematic way for finding a real root to an equation like this. And it involves a really interesting and somewhat clever substitution. So the idea is to let x be u minus v. In that case, x cubed is going to be the quantity u minus v all cubed, which is u cubed minus 3u squared v plus 3u v squared minus v cubed. And now we'll group things together. We have the u cubed minus v cubed part we'll put together. And then we have a minus 3uv times the quantity u minus v. And u minus v itself is actually x. So if we rearrange this, this tells us that x cubed plus 3uv times x minus the quantity u cubed minus v cubed is identically 0. Okay, well that looks very much like our original cubic equation. If we actually set these coefficients like 3uv to be 6 and u cubed minus v cubed to be 20, then solving for u and v, we'll actually figure out values of u and v and that will give us what x could be. And so that's what we'll do. So we'll figure out values of u and v that satisfy these two things and then we will go ahead and solve for what x ought to be. Okay, so first of all, 3uv is 6, so that means uv is 2. Uh, so we're going to use that together with the second equation by actually taking that second equation and squaring it and then substituting this uv equals 2. So if you square the second equation, we get u to the 6 minus 2u cubed v cubed plus v to the 6 is 400. Okay, since uv is 2, that gives us that u cubed v cubed is 8. And so that means that u to the 6 plus v to the 6 is equal to uh, 416 if we rearrange things. Now we can add another copy of 2u cubed v cubed. And the reason to do that is because the left-hand side now is actually u cubed plus v cubed all squared. So that'll give us access to u cubed plus v cubed. Okay, so u to the 6 plus v to the 6 is 416 that we figured out. And now we add in a 16 for the u cubed v cubed contribution to give us 432. 432 is 144 times 3. So this entire left side, which is u cubed plus v cubed all squared, is going to equal the 432, which tells us that u cubed plus v cubed is the square root of that, which is plus or minus uh, square root 432, or equivalently plus or minus uh, 12 times the square root of 3, since 432 is 144 times 3. Okay. So now we have access to u cubed minus v cubed and u cubed plus v cubed. We're going to put those together to figure something out. Now, interestingly enough here, we actually have a choice of what to do. So we have to be careful here. Um, but our goal is just to find one real root. We're not out to find all of them. 
So we can pick one of these values. We'll pick 12 root 3 and then solve and see what we get. Okay, so now we can figure out u cubed by adding these two equations. This gives us that 2u cubed is 20 plus 12 root 3. And so u cubed itself is going to be uh, half of what the right hand side is. Uh, so that's 10 plus 6 root 3. And so we'll pick the real root of this to give us u is the cube root of 10 plus 6 root 3. Okay, and we can do a similar thing to figure out uh, what v is if we figure out the real root for v, we'll pair it with the real root for u to get a real root for x. Now this actually requires care. Um, one thing that you should actually do is maybe use equation one to reciprocate u and figure out what v is, um, but it ends up working out in the end to be the right value of v if we use this procedure, so we'll go ahead and do that. So taking the second equation and subtracting the first equation, we get 2v cubed is 12 root 3 minus 20. So v is the cube root of 6 root 3 minus 10. Okay, great. So we have what u minus v is. And so we get that x is u, the cube root of 10 plus 6 root 3, minus v, which is the cube root of 6 root 3 minus 10. But then we have to remember that we shifted by 5 in the beginning to figure out our original cubic equation, uh, to isolate our original cubic equation. So we subtract 5 to get the root of our original cubic equation. Cool. Now, if you actually played with this, you might notice something a little bit funny about what we did. It's a little more complicated than we needed to do. So if you actually substitute x equals 2 here, on the left-hand side, you'll get 2 cubed plus 6 times 2 minus 20, which is 8 plus 12 minus 20, and that's 0. So that means that 2 has to be a root of this cubic equation, which actually means that x minus 2 is a factor of the left-hand side. And then you can find out the other factor knowing that it has to be a quadratic. The constant term will have to be a plus 10 to match the minus 2 to give negative 20. And we can figure out then that the x coefficient is negative 2. So x equals 2 is the root of this. And then the other roots are 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 40 all over 2. So that's the square root of negative 36 in there. Um, and that's negative 6 squared times 2. So we can uh, isolate this and get 1 plus or minus 3i as a root. Okay, uh, so that means that this quantity here in the bubble is actually 2. It's a complicated way to write the number 2. And we might be wondering, like, why is this the case? Well, actually, similar things to what we did in these computations can tell you why that thing on the left-hand side is actually 2. You can kind of do things in reverse, where you set x to be this quantity with the complicated cube roots, and rearrange to figure out what the, other, what the value of x ought to be by showing that x satisfies this original cubic equation. So sort of a backward way of doing this. I actually have a video on this, very similar to this video, um, right here linked above. Okay, cool. So a general way to find roots of a cubic, this actually can be used to figure out a general formula for cubic roots called Cardano's formula. Um, so a great way to be able to uh, solve these interesting equations that extends the quadratic formula.